Trillions of cicadas are emerging in some parts of the country after laying dormant for more than a decade. The collective noise from the insects can be as loud as a jet engine. It is so loud that some residents in South Carolina call the police. Cicadas are also beginning to come out in Illinois, which uh, will see two broods co-emerge for the first time in 200 years. For more on the uh, cicada emergence, we're joined by Jonathan L. Larson. He is an extension uh, entomologist at the University of Kentucky. Thanks for joining us. So we warned people that this was happening, but either they weren't paying attention to the news or they had no idea it was going to be this bad. But what are people experiencing now that these two broods are emerging? We have so many bugs just coming up out of the ground. It really is amazing to, to see and hear. Uh, I do know that it startles some people. The noise level can be quite loud. It's not necessary to involve the police, though. Uh, they'll be out here in a few weeks, uh, hopefully uh, by the end of June, and you won't have to experience it anymore. And they've been waiting 13 or 17 years to get above ground. They don't want to spend this precious time that they have in a jail cell. Um, so what are the similarities or differences between the two broods, I guess. How do you know they're two different broods? So we know that these are two different broods because one group that's emerging uh, sort of concentrated in the Illinois and Wisconsin and Iowa area, that's a 17-year brood. So they've been waiting 17 years to do this. Hmm. That's three different species, uh, and they have some visual and auditory things that they they uh, that make up their body that uh, help us to differentiate them from the 13-year cicadas which are a part of the great southern brood, uh, which is uh, going to be emerging across much of the southeastern United States. I just can't get over the word brood, you know, because I think brood, I think hordes, like the great southern brood. It's just like an invading military or something. Um, how, like how do they know? How do they know when to emerge, these broods? That's a great question. Uh, so when they're underground, they're nymphal cicadas, so they're baby cicadas. And they're counting kind of the ebb and the flow of their food resource, the tree sap that they suck out of the, the tree roots. Mm. And they log that. I don't want to make it sound like they actually count. But after <laughs> a certain number of those instances, it's a cue in their, their brains that tells them it's time uh, to come up. They do miscount. We have some that rise up early, at least a year. Uh, and we have some that they miscount and they're late, uh, up to three years late even. Wow. Um, you know, you mentioned that they drink uh, see, uh, tree sap. And, you know, often when we see like a bunch of insects kind of descending on us, we're usually warned, you know, your gardens maybe impact your trees, protect your trees. You don't often hear that about cicadas. When you have these many cicadas out feeding, does that not have an impact on the environment or on the foliage? Luckily, as adults, they don't eat very much. They do most of their eating as immatures below ground. And when they come above ground, they're really only looking to do a couple of things. The males are looking to sing, and the singing is to attract females. Mm. Uh, I often joke it's kind of the world's darkest uh, Mardi Gras because <laughs> it's just a bunch of singing and, and other things and then dying. Uh, they're going to oh. be bugs. So it's, it's not about eating when they come above ground, and that's one of the reasons that we don't consider them major pests. Uh, they're females when they lay their eggs. There can be some problems. They can uh, cause the twigs to break in certain trees. And that can be problematic for fruit growers, but we just wrap nets around those trees and end okay. up protecting. Singing, mating, and and dying. They're going out with a bang. No, no, no pun That's intended, right. Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan Larson, thank you so much. <laughs>